Here we go. Hi, everyone. My name is Katja. I work at Spotify as an ideal coach uh, in Stockholm. And I'm very happy to be here. I'm also very happy that I'm still alive. <laughs> I arrived in London yesterday. And as I stepped out of the subway station, uh, it struck me that you folks drive on the other side of the street. <laughs> And uh, this was uh, very confusing. I, of course, knew this already, but it's still very confusing. Uh, it also makes this city a bit dangerous for me. Um, but I made it here. I'm very happy. What I did, and this is actually true, I had uh, a short uh, and very corny checklist in my head. <coughs> So whenever I want to cross the street, I have to stop, uh, and I have to remember that I'm in London, and I have to look the other way. And that's kind of easy to remember, but then the cars come from that direction as well, and that always surprises me. And it feels awkward to do it this way. And the reason why I'm telling you this is that when you want to change uh, behavior, and transforming organizations is very much about changing behavior. When you want to do that, you have to make yourself aware of the behaviors that you're already expressing. So you have to be very explicit about what you want to change. And sometimes a checklist could help you with that. And I will tell you about how we did a reorg uh, in a part of Spotify about six months ago. And when we did this, we decided that we should be very aware of, first, the transformation process itself, but also what happens afterwards. Yeah, this is me. I've been working at Spotify for two years. Before that, I've been in different agile settings, different companies uh, since 2008. I'm an engineer at heart, so it's necessary for me to be in the technical context. So some background for you. Spotify has been around for, for nine, nine years, almost 10. Um, and we have been growing a lot since we started. Uh, and for organizations, bigger means slower sometimes. Uh, and this was something that we experienced. So we experienced that we weren't learning as fast as we could. We weren't making decisions as fast as we could. We had some um, fussiness, basically, that stopped us from doing that. And also, we wanted to find a way that we could scale and still stay true to uh, things that are really key to, to our way of, of working. So uh, we wanted to still be able to be autonomous, and we wanted to still be able to be fully agile. And I'm going to tell you about uh, an example from a part of Spotify called Product Platform. It's the part where I work, and we are responsible for all the things that are common in our different clients. So that would basically be the platform. And we're also responsible for for partnerships with different tech companies, such as Facebook, for example. And when we started off with this reorg, um, we thought that, OK, we're just going to take this partner part and the platform part and put them together and make a bigger unit of these two, and it's going to be fine. Uh, it wasn't that simple. We realized that. These two units weren't really separated as nicely as we would like them to be. They had actually grown into each other. We had some uh, issues with mission pollution, so that uh, one of them was responsible for too many things, and some things were actually shared between the two. And some things uh, that we owned shouldn't really be owned by us, but we had sort of just grabbed it as we went along. So we realized that we actually need to change. And the thing was, we didn't know into what, and we didn't know how. And that's uh, quite an interesting challenge. And uh, at this point, 
we had an organization of around 150 people, and we had this kind of huge, big problem ahead of us that all of our lives and all of our world was basically changing. And I guess the sort of traditional way of making such a change is that you bring management in and you decide how to do this and who goes to which team and then you find out your communications plan and you sort of push this to the rest of the org. Um, and even if we might have not have done it that way at Spotify, <laughs> like completely that way, we were in the beginning still thinking sort of along those lines. And we then came together and decided that, no, that's actually not the approach we're going to take. And we're all for trying new things. So we said, let's, let's try a completely different approach. And what we did was that we brought in everyone who was affected by this change, so rough, roughly 150 people. And we brought them all in to be part of this reorg. And the reason why we did that is that no one has the full picture. I don't, and someone else in some team doesn't, and the management certainly doesn't. So bringing everyone in meant that we had more perspectives to solve this problem. We also believe at Spotify that the people who are working on something are best equipped to actually make decisions for that something. They know all the nitty-gritty details, they know the history, they know what's important, they know what you can just forget about. So, and this is uh, like very connected to the whole autonomy piece, to be able to actually decide for the things that you're working on. And also, we know that people are more likely to care about something that they have been part of creating. And we want people to care about the org and the company where they are working. So this was basically the reason, uh, our reasoning behind trying this new, new approach. And when I say we, uh, I mean mostly the Agile coaches. This um, transformation was sort of uh, driven by us. Uh, and we had a lot of discussions with some of the managers who were not completely sold uh, to this idea from the beginning. So we decided that we were going to um, do this reorganization with three key principles. And we wanted to make this reorg as transparent as we could. We wanted it to be as inclusive as we could. And we wanted it to be as collaborative as we could. And we Several times we got back to this and, and we had to remind ourselves, we had to also have that corny checklist. And just a short overview of the whole process. So we did this during like the main part of this, during like a month. And what we did first was to bring uh, all the product owners, all the agile coaches, all the chapter leads, so that would be managers, together to find out the, how does this landscape actually, what does it actually look like. So we did preparation workshops and we had uh, groups in Stockholm, we had uh, groups in San Francisco and groups in uh, Boston. So we were kind of spread out as well. We then brought uh, all of these people together in a two-day two workshop to set mission and to set uh, our first suggestion, suggestion of uh, the structure of this organization. And we were fully open with that this was something that we wanted everyone else to challenge. But it's easier to challenge something if you have like an, a basic idea to start questioning. So what we did is we shared the outcome back to the organization. And we didn't do that by just sending an email, but we had uh, a document and we uh, distributed this. And we also had sessions with all of the teams to get feedback on what we have come up with. And we got a lot of feedback. 
And we had this new structure here. So it used to be like two big boxes. And now we had uh, four different uh, boxes instead. And then we got into a really interesting exercise uh, where we self-organized into squads. So squad is the name for team at Spotify. And in this structure, we had 16 uh, teams. We had 100 people who were supposed to be working in a team. And you belong to one team. Uh, we believe in focus in that way. So that's quite a challenge as well. How do we get 100 people to collaborate on forming something like this? And this is the first time that we have done this at Spotify. So we, we had to come up with some idea and try that and learn from that. And so we did. And then the last part uh, that we're actually still in, I don't think we'll ever, ever be done, uh, is the transitioning into the new org. And something that I want to point out here is to be transparent and inclusive and to invite everyone to collaborate with you. What's essential is to make sure that there are a lot of feedback loops and that you're open to the feedback that you get. And sometimes, uh, sometimes you have to be a broken record in asking for feedback and you have to ask for it in different ways. But basically all of these uh, pink beautiful circles was times that we uh, explicitly asked everyone in the organization for feedback. And here you see uh, the structure that I mentioned uh, up on a big whiteboard in the middle of our, the part of the office where we are. So it was Stockholm focused in that sense. And actually uh, the teams in Boston and San Francisco were not, uh, were not affected as much by this reorg. And the task that we gave everyone in this group was to collaborate on the organization that would best uh, help us fulfill our missions. So, and just to run you through the practical stuff of this, we had this up on the board. We printed out name tags for everyone who was in this reorg. And we put up everything that we already knew. So where we knew who the product owner was, we would put that person's name up. And we had missions for all the squads or teams. And you could only move your own name tag. Uh, we had this board up for a week and we urged everyone to make their sort of initial idea for where they wanted to be as soon as possible. Because what we wanted was to get the discussions going. And we wanted to have uh, those discussions as early on as possible. And actually during the second day we found out that one of these squads we would never be able to staff that squad. So we had to solve that some other way. We also said that there's no such thing as first come first served. But if we see that there are conflict in interests then that is something that we want to uh, talk about to find a better solution because there must be some reason why we have that conflict. So what we made sure happened was uh, this. So every day we had what we in Sweden call a daily fika, which is basically a coffee break. Um, and everyone was there. Um, you didn't have to go if you didn't want to, but there was a clear opportunity to go there, ask questions and, and work with the board together with everyone else. We are a bit more diverse than this picture. <laughs> Just want to say that. Uh, this doesn't make it any better, I guess. <laughs> so communication is key. It's super important also to make sure that communication happens. And we asked all our managers to have focused one-on-ones during this period of time to make sure that everyone was uh, being heard. So what we learned is that uh, making everyone feel included is not easy. Transformation is hard. Um, what we've learned afterwards is that people felt that they weren't included early enough, 
that they wanted to be part of also forming the structure. Um, and I think that is definitely a learning that we have to bring on to the next time. Hopefully it will be, uh, we won't do such a big reorg soon. Um, we definitely think that including everyone made the result better. Just the fact that we had a number of the original ideas that we had were then scrapped and replaced by better ideas. And that was only because we brought everyone in. Because those new ideas didn't come from the original group of 40 people. <coughs> and the last part is, again, if you want to change your behavior, you need to be conscious about it, and you need to actually make an effort. S Oops. So this is the thing. Uh, you have to be your own favorite pain in your ass. Um, because you have to be repeating the stuff all over again to yourself. And these are questions that we have been asking ourselves both during the reorg and probably even more afterwards. So are we really being transparent? It's very easy to say that we're transparent, but are we really being transparent? Are we sharing as much as we could? Or could we be sharing even more? Do we really need to keep this to ourselves? And very often the answer is no, we don't need to keep this to ourselves, we can share more. We also ask who else should be included? Who else has input to this? Who else is interested? Who else is passionate? Who else is affected? And the tricky thing here is that most often we don't know. And a way to solve that for us has been to always uh, invite everyone. And if you are interested or have input, then you're allowed to come and most welcome to come. And if you don't, then you can just skip that meeting or skip that workshop. And the last is probably the most important. Why don't we ask the team? So whenever we have something that we're discussing, we want to make a decision, we, we ask ourselves, why don't we ask the team what they think we should do about this as an organization? So that's, it's really powerful. It goes for both if you're running a small team, but it also fits very well into uh, running a whole organization. Thank you. Thank you.